Okay, get this. Celebrities might not be the best source of information to determine what HIPAA does and does not do. I know. Let's talk about vaccine verification. That's when someone asks you to prove that you've been vaccinated. Although you might expect current members of Congress to know the law, here's Marjorie Taylor Greene getting it completely wrong. Well, your, your first question is a violation of my HIPAA rights. You see, with HIPAA rights, uh, we don't have to reveal our medical records, and that also involves our vaccine records. And unfortunately, now we have thousands of other Marjorie Taylor Greens out there all making similar claims. Here's a guy explaining that it's a HIPAA violation to film a COVID testing site. You're not allowed to film. It's a HIPAA violation. Again. It's always been that way. Here's a Karen who says she's protected from wearing a mask by the ADA and HIPAA. No, I am, I am protected by ADA and HIPAA. Here's someone saying the government can't ask you about your vaccine status because that is illegal on its face. This person, dot plus dot, thinks that HIPAA might have something to do with the Hippocratic Oath. And Angela Abarno has some hashtag not legal advice for those of you discussing whether celebrities are vaccinated. Quote, you are literally breaking the law when you post about some celebrity being vaxxed or not. And the idea that someone might have to prove that they received a vaccine has led to some pretty extreme reactions. Quote, proposals like these smack of 1940s Nazi Germany. We must make every effort to keep America from becoming a show your papers society. And that was from freshman representative Madison Cawthorn. Meanwhile, libertarian Justin Amash called health papers dystopian. I guess neither of these gentlemen have ever played a sport in school because health papers are required or enrolled their children in school where health papers are required. And apparently even pointing out someone's bad HIPAA takes gets you called a Nazi. Like this from Scott Travis, quote, okay, grammar Nazi, no one is allowed to ask for your personal health information unless they are HIPAA certified. That doesn't even make sense. But these reactions do raise some interesting legal issues. Does the government have the power to verify whether someone has been vaccinated? Can employers ask about someone's vaccine status? And what does HIPAA have to do with any of this? Hey, Legal Eagles, it's time to think like a medical malpractice lawyer. There's a lot of dodgy information about vaccine verification, HIPAA, and the government's power over individuals. So today I'm going to tackle all of your questions about COVID-19 and the vaccines, starting with everyone's favorite new law, HIPAA. So what exactly is HIPAA? HIPAA, otherwise known as the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, according to the internet, is fighting for your freedom. She will stop employers from requiring vaccinations and will vanquish any attempt to discuss whether a person is vaccinated. Unfortunately, the reality is far, far more mundane. To ensure both proper access to and confidentiality of medical records, Congress enacted HIPAA in 1996. HIPAA is a federal law that establishes the rules for managing medical information throughout the United States. Although states may adopt stricter confidentiality confidentiality rules, HIPAA sets the minimum standards and protections for medical privacy. HIPAA also gives individuals control over their own protected health information, or PHI, including their right to access their PHI and obtain copies, request amendments to correct or complete their records, request confidential communications, obtain an accounting of who used or received their PHI, impose restrictions on disclosure of their PHI, opt out of fundraising communications, and revoke previous authorizations, as well as file complaints about the misuse of their own PHI. And in 2009, HIPAA was amended by the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act, or the High Tech Act. These amendments, which became effective in 2013, add strict new penalties, including the possibility of personal criminal liability, and make compliance with HIPAA's privacy and security standards even more important. And I have some bad news for all of you freedom fighters out there. HIPAA, signed into law by MAGA foe Bill Clinton, is not actually a general privacy law protecting anyone from getting your health information. HIPAA is a health privacy law that applies in very limited situations. And let's get one thing straight before we go any further in this video. Attention everyone, it's HIPAA H-I-P-A-A, -A, not H-I-P-P-A. All you have to do is look at the words that go into the act, and it's definitely pronounced HIPAA, not pronounced HEPA. Okay. Sorry, had to get that off my chest. Now back to what HIPAA actually is and does. HIPAA includes a privacy rule that limits doctors, hospitals, and health insurance companies from disclosing your personal health information. Now, medical information by itself is not protected PHI, unless it can be related to a person, that is, it contains one or more individual identifiers. HIPAA specifically applies to, quote, covered entities, which includes healthcare providers, like I just mentioned, clearinghouses that process medical information, and health plans. And covered entities can't disclose your 
your PHI to other people, generally without your permission. So for example, two employees were fired from the University of New Mexico hospital when they took cell phone pictures of patients receiving treatment and then posted those photos to social media. And a bunch of people got fired in LA hospitals when they kept accessing celebrities PHI because you know, they're celebrities. Though there are definitely some exceptions here. For example, if you're in a car accident, paramedics who take you to the hospital aren't barred from discussing your health situation with doctors. And if the police need your health information, there are exceptions allowing them to get it without your consent. However, HIPAA's privacy rule doesn't apply to your employer if they aren't a covered entity. And it doesn't apply when you voluntarily provide information. Therefore, HIPAA's privacy requirements don't apply to most private businesses. So for example, when Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott says, um, I don't necessarily uh, think that's exactly important, Clarence. Uh, I think that's HIPAA. He's almost certainly wrong. The HIPAA privacy rule probably doesn't apply to your employer. The privacy rule doesn't protect your employment records, even if the information in those records is health related. And the NFL is actually a good example of how much power employees have in this context. Think about it. The league has rules about the way that teams report player injuries. Teams have to list players as questionable, doubtful, or out because of injury or illness. And that's not a HIPAA violation. It's an employer work rule. And the same goes for everything related to Aaron Rodgers. But I mean, what can you expect for someone that went to Cal. Go Bruins! So in most cases, the HIPAA privacy rule doesn't apply to the actions of an employer. But I can hear you asking the question, can the government ever make health papers mandatory? And isn't it wrong for the government to force people to divulge that information? Well, look, I can't tell you whether things are right or wrong. I'm just a lawyer. I'm a lawyer, I can tell you whether they're legal or not. And if you've spent any time on the internet, you've probably also heard the claim, don't ask me about my vaccine status or I'll sue under HIPAA. Well, many people think that sharing personal information with government agencies, employers, and other third parties is an invasion of privacy. And look, I mean, that's a moral question, not a legal one. But America doesn't have one omnibus invasion of privacy law. If you've ever played high school sports or taken a drug test before starting a new job, you've experienced this kind of invasion of privacy, which requires you to disclose your personal information in order to participate in something that you want to do. And here's an incomplete list of activities that you can only participate in by giving up your private information. A driver's license, a hunting license, concealed carry permit, school vaccinations, sports physicals, international travel, immigration, and voting. Of course, those with law degrees from twitter.com will say that those records are provided totally voluntarily. A vaccine verification is not. But in the eyes of the law, they're exactly the same thing. You don't have to provide your kids vaccination records if you don't want to. But if the school requires them, that means your kids don't get to be enrolled in that school. Likewise, you might prefer not to provide personal information demonstrating that you should get a concealed carry permit, but you don't have to provide it. You might not want your employer to know whether you've done drugs or not, but Sometimes that's a condition of employment. And really there are a lot of instances when employers can and probably should be asking about things that might be considered health information. A person might volunteer that information when they call in sick or mention it to a coworker, or the person might write the information down on a worker's compensation form after an injury or fill out a health insurance form to receive benefits. And there are plenty of state laws requiring you to provide medical records to receive worker's compensation. And if you choose not to provide this information to your employer, the employer can generally discipline or fire you. Remember, in the US, most employment is at will. And with respect to COVID-19 vaccines, President Biden has requested OSHA begin promulgating rules about vaccines in the workplace. And it may be the case that employers are actually creating an unsafe work environment by allowing the unvaccinated to go to work. But what about other laws? Well, generally private businesses can have any rules they want so long as they don't discriminate. Now, of course, businesses still can't discriminate against protected classes. Businesses still have to follow Title VII, the American with Disabilities Act and other laws barring discrimination. It's illegal to refuse to serve someone based on their race, religion, sex, or national origin. However, someone's vaccine status doesn't fall into any of those protected categories. Being unvaccinated or vaccinated is not considered a disability. The ADA does regulate medical examinations in the workplace though. Under the ADA, an employer can't ask a job applicant whether they have a disability or about the nature of an obvious disability. The employer also can't force someone to pass a medical examination before being offered the job. However, after the person is offered for the job, an employer can condition the job offer on passing a medical examination. But there are some caveats here. The employer can't impose a medical exam on just one person. For it to be legal, all employees in the job have to take the medical exam and it has to be related to the requirements of the job. But there are some new state laws that are attempting to change the status quo on medical information. In Florida, for example, businesses are not allowed to make their own decisions when it comes to COVID. Governor DeSantis signed an order stating that airlines and cruise ships could not demand proof of vaccination anywhere in the travel 
friendly state. So the question is, can an employer discriminate against a person for not taking the vaccine? And the answer is probably yes, but it depends on the context. The EEOC issued interim guidelines saying that employers may encourage or possibly require COVID-19 vaccinations, but they still must comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act, Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and other workplace laws. So yes, subject to certain exceptions, an employer can make a COVID vaccine mandatory, but they can't physically restrain you and jab you in the arm, but they can offer you a carrot like a $100 bonus or a stick. In other words, getting fired uh, if you refuse. And if your employer wants these specific results, they could ask you to voluntarily turn them over or make you sign a HIPAA waiver so they can get the results from a third party. Because remember, HIPAA does actually apply to healthcare providers and their disclosures to third parties. And on the flip side, it's probably legal for employers to ban vaccinated people as well, though that might be subject to the OSHA requirements we talked about earlier, where if an employer is creating an unsafe work environment, well, they run into liability on that end as well. But a private school in Florida banned teachers who had been vaccinated from any in-person contact with students, citing debunked conspiracy theories about vaccine side effects. The school's assessment about vaccine safety is completely contradicted by science and data, but the school probably has a right to make its own rules since it's not public. And in keeping with the reality of HIPAA that it isn't a general privacy law, this school's requirement uh, for staff to fill out a form disclosing their vaccine status probably passes muster. So as you can see, there's freedom of choice going in both directions. But of course, what about the Supreme Court and government action? Lots of people seem to think that the Supreme Court should immediately strike down any law that resembles a vaccine passport. But a vaccine passport is just an immunization record and immunization records are legal and the Supreme Court has already weighed in on it. So in terms of whether the government can make vaccines mandatory, just like employers, the answer is probably yes, but there are also many, many caveats. The landmark case on this is called Jacobson, Massachusetts, which we've talked about many times on this channel, but a short summary. During a smallpox outbreak in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1902, the state introduced an ordinance requiring all adults to be vaccinated or revaccinated against smallpox. The penalty for non-compliance was a $5 fine, and a man named Jacobson refused the vaccine, saying it violated his religious liberty. Now, states generally have the right to regulate the health, safety, welfare, and morals of its citizen. These are known as police powers. However, these powers have been balanced with individual liberty interests. And the question was whether the US Constitution prevented the state from implementing vaccines. The Supreme Court held that uh, the Constitution did not prevent such a law from going into effect. That effectively the public interest in making sure everyone was vaccinated overrode the personal liberties in this particular case. Now, Jacobson was decided in 1905. This is a case involving a state law, but it's likely that the same result would be reached with respect to the federal government as well. So long as the federal government has the power in question, remember the federal government is theoretically limited more than a state government is. If the federal government has that power, then it's likely that the constitution isn't going to prevent such a law from going into effect. And then some people are pointing to the Nuremberg Code as something that would prevent a vaccine mandate or a vaccine passport. The Nuremberg Code, which is not a US law. No, that's probably not going to prevent the government from implementing any of those laws. But on a slightly more reasonable note, there's the question of whether HIPAA overrules uh, the vaccine mandate. And there is an argument that HIPAA prevents vaccine mandates and vaccine passports. It's wrong, but there is an argument. The argument goes that it would be illegal to mandate a vaccine because doing so requires the government to find out who has been vaccinated. Under this view of the law, vaccine cards would also be illegal because of HIPAA, because the vaccine card is a health record but that's a pretty incorrect interpretation of HIPAA. As we discussed, the law prohibits the release of protected health information by covered entities without your consent. Who are these covered entities again? Well, healthcare providers, health insurers, and medical billing companies. What do they have to do? Well, they have to keep your information confidential, safeguard against security threats, and make sure employees know how to protect your information. So unless you work for a health provider or insurance company, and you are a patient and client of that company at the same time, your employer probably isn't constrained by HIPAA, and neither is the government. And even healthcare providers have the right to ask their staff about their vaccine status. Since they are requesting the information, they're not releasing it to a third party. So the bottom line is that HIPAA means health providers can't release your information about you without your permission. The law says nothing about whether you can or should answer questions about your vaccination status or other health issues. HIPAA doesn't apply when you are talking about your own health. And of course, HIPAA has all kinds of exceptions carved out in the law itself. So even if HIPAA applied, the only thing you'd need to do to create another exception is 
pass a law, the same law that probably requires the vaccination or vaccination status itself. But whether you're staying home to avoid the anti-vaxxers or living life to the fullest because you got vaccinated, you need comfortable clothes. And as the weather is changing, I stocked up on sweaters from Mack Weldon, like this one. This tech cashmere v-neck sweater is insanely soft and warm. It has a stitching here on the shoulder. It's slim fit. And even though it's wool and cashmere, it's not scratchy because it has a cotton interior. It's genius. It goes great with my radius joggers and obviously my Mack Weldon boxer briefs. And if I'm not in court or on a Zoom call with a judge, I'm often wearing Mack Weldon. They focus on smart design and premium fabrics. I order in multiple sizes and have them shipped to my home. Then I just return the ones that didn't fit me right and keep the ones that fit perfectly. And with Mack Weldon's loyalty program, you can get 20% off free shipping and access to new products. It's automatic when you sign up and order at MacWeldon.com slash Legal Eagle. Now, if you'd like to try Mack Weldon and you'd like to get 20% off your first order, just click on the link that's on screen right now and use the promo code Legal Eagle at checkout. So just click on the link that's on screen or the one that's in the description to get 20% off your first order. Plus, clicking on that link really helps out this channel. And while you're at it, click on this playlist over here with all of my other real law reviews. So click on this playlist or I'll see you in court.